2020 is likely to have been the worst ever year for the aviation industry. Airlines lost over 118 billion US dollars. It's been a very, very difficult year for, for airlines across the world. So 2021 for us is still a year of recovery. Actually, we just need to see a restart as soon as possible. Um, as you know, our predictions are that uh, things don't start to improve. We don't get back to 2019 levels until 2024. And we don't get back to domestic, uh, domestic levels for 2019 until 2022. Revenue for the global aviation market is likely to have plunged by more than half in 2020 compared to 2019. So 2021 is going to probably be a, a challenging year as a continuation of what we've seen in 2020. So we're going to see a significant almost halving of the, of the sector. Before COVID, the margins for the sector was about 5%. So even before the pandemic started, the sector was not a, a very attractive sector to begin with. But during the pandemic, the expected EBIT margins are negative 30. So it's a, it's a challenging place. With international travel limited, domestic travel has served as a stopgap measure for some airlines. All of the regions have been badly affected, very badly affected. Um, Asia is probably going to come out earlier than other regions. Although this is incredibly difficult to call, uh, we thought that Europe would come out earlier. But in fact, Europe has been very, very badly hit by second and third and fourth waves. So in fact, that's set it back. Um, the bright spot for Asia Pacific, China. Uh, China's domestic market is pretty much back to where it was. We hope that they will start to reopen international markets in the same way. And of course, um, the impact of Chinese travel on the rest of the Asia Pacific region is big. So that bodes well. It's really the international uh, market that is still uh, pretty well down to zero. Uh, we're talking about activity levels of around 10% of where they were last year. The first half of the year will be very difficult, not, not much better than what we saw in 2020. This is due to the, uh, the fact that it's going to take a long time for the vaccines to be rolled out and to have an impact on the market. So the earliest we could really start seeing uh, an impact from the vaccines would be the second half of the year. And uh, for the first half, we're, we're looking at very limited international travel, uh, particularly here in the Asia Pacific. Um, the reason is, is the borders will remain closed. The only exception really is, is these air travel bubbles, but there, there's very few of them. And uh, the impact of, of these bubbles is actually quite limi limited. As countries across the globe inoculate their populations against the COVID-19 virus, IATA is pushing for travel to be allowed to resume sooner rather than later. There's also this idea that the vaccine is going to um, sort everything out. Of course, in the longer term it does, but it will take at least 12 to 18 months to see a rollout of vaccine. To the point that our, we made through our AGM resolutions, asking governments, all of the building blocks are in place to restart with a testing protocol. We should have, of course, a mixed protocol that accounts for people who have been vaccinated and people who have not. But we need to restart as quickly as possible for everybody's uh, uh, well-being, for economic well-being as well. We already have um, testing protocols through the um, ICAO takeoff guidance that can be implemented and that make travel safe, particularly if you're talking about travel between countries with a similar level of transmission. As governments and airlines work towards reviving travel, air freight has become a key lifeline for the sector. Cargo will continue to be um, kind of a bright spot in 2021 because we'll have higher than normal cargo rates uh, continuing. And, and that's partly driven by the vaccine, but also um, and the shipment needs for the vaccine, but it's also all, everything else because um, the vaccine is going to be a high priority item, which mean, means there's going to be less space for everything else, which actually ends up increasing potentially the rates for, for to, to ship um, you know, other types of cargo, which in turn means more cargo revenues for the airlines. 
However, given the plunge in passenger revenues, industry watchers say the improvement in cargo will make little difference. For most airlines that we know uh, here in Asia, they, they, the portion of cargo is, is pretty small. So, so, um, so even if cargo revenues improve, it just doesn't do anything, uh, you know, to, to, to near to, to come break even. For airlines like Singapore Airlines, for example, it doesn't do nearly enough to mitigate that pain that they're feeling.